Welcome to the newsroom, I'm Owen Poindexter. Happy Thanksgiving. If there's one sports property that you associate with Thanksgiving, it is almost certainly the NFL. So I thought it was time to just check in on the NFL. How is it going? Is it living up to its name as the biggest by far league in the US, especially while the World Cup is also going on providing some unusual competition? The NFL, even though it um, inked some enormous, you know, record-breaking media deals last year for next season and going forward. Uh, it still has some major media properties still on the market, namely NFL Sunday Ticket, so we're gonna check in on that. We're also gonna check in on its overseas expansion. It's not content to just be the biggest league in the US. It's also looking at Europe, it's looking at Mexico. So we'll have all that for you right after this. 2000, 2008, 2022. When it comes to the economy, those are some scary years. Dot-com crash, housing crash, and the roller coaster we're going through right now. One thing is certain, it's a dangerous time to not know your numbers. But over 31,000 businesses have the confidence and clarity they need because they rely on NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, planning, and budgeting, so you can manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need all in one place. So how do you prepare for uncertain times? The answer, NetSuite. NetSuite helps you identify rising costs, automate your business processes, and easily see where to save money. That's why 93% of customers said they improved their visibility and control when they upgraded to NetSuite. What are you waiting for? Right now, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. Head to netsuite.com slash the newsroom right now. netsuite.com slash the newsroom. netsuite.com slash the newsroom. All right, let's jump into it. I'm joined today by our senior writer, Mike McCarthy. How are you doing, Mike? Good, Owen. Great to be back. Yeah, so uh, I'm glad you're on. This obviously wasn't planned, but um, we're recording this on Monday. We got some major news last night. I was actually called into duty to uh, to write a post <laughs> on Sunday night for our Monday morning newsletter, which is not our normal operations here at Front Office Sports. Anyway, Bob Iger replaces Bob Chappick as CEO of Disney there were some rumblings about Chapek maybe being in, you know, on thin ice, but he also just had his contract removed, uh, renewed in June, uh, or yeah, I think it was June. Anyway, big Sunday night surprise in Disney. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, there's nothing like the Disney board ruining your Sunday night, is it, with a, <laughs> a, a news yeah. drop, right, Alan? Uh, actually, yeah. I, I think it's a, a, a net positive for uh, the Mouse House. Bob Iger is one of the great... Uh, executives of the late 20th century, early 21st century. Uh, a lot of people don't know this. He started at ABC Sports, so he's got sports running through his veins. And I, I think he's a big sports guy, loves ESPN. So I think this is actually a net positive for both Disney and ESPN. And, and when you look at the stock price, Owen, um, Disney has lost so much value under Chapek. I think they had to make a move. Yeah, and... Um... It's not like this is a just get rid of Chapek move. I mean, obviously, that's, you know, if everything was going fine, they wouldn't just boot this guy out. But they're replacing him with, you know, the one person in the world who has 15 years experience at this exact job was doing it as early as or as late as 2020. So it's not just like, OK, who's the next guy up? Let's hope he can fix everything. No, no one's at all sure that Iger is going to take this in a totally different direction and right the ship. Obviously, he's got something of a mandate to do something along those lines. It'd be very interesting to see. Um, and, and we can get into all this. We're going to be talking about the NFL and its media situation today. Uh, but uh, are you expecting Iger to have any kind of different game plan around sports rights? Because there's some major, major ones coming up in, on Disney's negotiation table. Well, if I know Iger, um, he is going to go hard after the NBA. Uh, over a week or so ago, David Zasloff, the boss of Warner Brothers Discovery, got a lot of attention, Owen, by sort of playing hardball with the NBA. He was kind of at an investor conference. He was like, we don't need the NBA. We'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I think if I know Iger, he's going to use that as an opening to tell Adam Silver in the NBA how much, in fact, Disney loves them and how much they want to be in business with them. Because, as I said, Iger loves sports, and I can't see them losing uh, the NBA on his watch. Yeah, right. And it's an interesting moment in terms of you know, positioning yourself. So if you don't get it, 
Um, you look like, well, you know, I told you before, we didn't really need this property instead of saying like, oh, like I just said how badly we wanted this and then, uh, then we didn't get it. So, you know, maybe a little bit of, uh, you know, brand positioning ahead of time. So I I think he was posturing. I think he was posturing for the street. And uh, the problem with posturing for the street like that is these league people have long, uh, memories. Uh, I remember back in the nineties, the eighties and nineties, when CBS and NBC cried poverty to the NFL. Oh, you guys are so expensive. We're not making any money. Da, 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 da. And the NFL said, okay, screw you. And they went and got Fox. Yeah. And they went and got a, another network. And you know what? Both of those networks came crawling back on their hands and knees to get the uh, another NFL package. So you got to be uh, you know delicate when you're dealing with a, a league that big. Right. There's only one NBA. Uh, and there are a lot of media networks, so it, it is a favorable situation for the NBA yeah. because if you're if you're just say, well, we don't want to pay that much, they're going to find who is going to pay that much. Yeah. And there's always the, Amazon, the there's thing, Apple. Exactly, there's Amazon is out. And the other thing that made everybody scratch their head, Owen, was uh, Turner Sports just made the big deal out of re-signing the entire cast out of right. uh, inside the NBA. Charles Barkley on down. They all got new deals. So why are you doing that if the head guy is sort of saying we're men's of men's on the NBA. It doesn't make any sense. Right. I mean, there's no point in signing those big guys unless you're going to keep the property. So, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Um, all right. Let's 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 start talking NFL. Um, the one league bigger than, than the NBA in the U.S. <laughs> uh, so is the NFL living up to that name this year? Is it... Is it doing as well as it looks like it's doing in terms of ratings and just making money hand over fist here? The NFL is king. If anything, Owen, it's even widening the gap between itself and other leagues and other entertainment properties. I mean, we cover sports, but if you look at what's going on in entertainment, if you read The Hollywood Reporter and the varieties of the world, you know what I mean? All those shows are falling through the roof. Scripted dramas, comedies reality TV, they're all falling apart. Uh, the one block that's holding up the TV ecosystem is the NBA. Uh, you know, they, they just the have NFL, the most, yeah. uh, and the, uh, I'm sorry, the NFL, exactly. Yeah. And uh, the most, they just had the most watched game of the season. And that record is going to last about another, th- you know, two or three days because this Thanksgiving, the Dallas Cowboys are going to play uh, the New York Giants on Thanksgiving Day and I predict that game is going to do over 40 million viewers. So, yeah, I mean, the NFL is King Kong. It's the 300-pound gorilla, and everybody got to get out of their way. Yeah, and it's interesting having the World Cup going on right now. It's not used to competing with the NFL. So, uh, it, you know, I think fans can multitask. It's just going to be a big sports bonanza for a week or two here. But, um, but, but yeah, uh, I- the... I'll give, I'll give a perfect example, uh, Owen, about uh, you know World Cup stands. I know the World Cup is the world's biggest event, but you know what? Uh, Fox had uh, both the NFL and the World Cup on. Where did it uh, show those uh, two events on Sunday? Yeah. The NFL a- went on Big Fox, the broadcast ah. channel, and mm-hmm. the World Cup went on MS1, the little cable channel. So that shows mm-hmm. you, you know, where the priorities are in this country. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and they're not wrong. I mean, in this country, football. U.S. football beats you know, European football. Um, so the NFL has, so they've sold off most of their, their big media properties for you know, the next 10 years, uh, just in terms of regular season games, Super Bowl, playoffs, all that. Uh, there's one big remaining property still left out there, and that's NFL Sunday Ticket. What right. do we know about those negotiations right now? Well, everybody's pointing to Apple, but I think the NFL is, again, playing hardball. I don't think the NFL feels that it's getting what Sunday ticket it's worth or what it thinks Sunday ticket is worth. So it's holding out for a better deal. The other uh, thing to watch here, Owen, is you could package Sunday ticket with NFL media. In other words, NFL.com, NFL Network could all be smushed together into one big deal, and they could get their number and move their number that way. So uh, all signs still point to uh, Apple. But I, I tell you, you know, the NFL and Amazon are pouring, pouring at each other like a couple of teenagers in heat. They love each other. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Amazon say, you know what, this NFL thing is going so well, you know, let's uh, let's talk Sunday ticket. Yeah, I mean, it'll be really interesting. And 
So for these, yeah, obviously you always assume the highest bid is ultimately going to win out here. Do you think it's important for the NFL to bring in Apple as a partner? They've got Amazon. They've got all the major other networks. Apple, yeah. you know, has however many gazillion iPhones um, in everyone's pockets. Apple TV Plus is becoming more and more of a, a desirable property. Yep. Does that factor into this whole thing, or is it ultimately just highest bidder wins? Definitely. And it's not always the highest bidder. Uh, I think it's a matter of choice and who they see the future with. I mean, the uh, NFL is a company that looks 10 years down the road. I think they want to be in business with Apple. They see Apple uh, as the flip side of Amazon. If Amazon is the most successful e-commerce retailer, then Apple is the most successful consumer products company with incredible technology and incredible R&D. And all these ways that they could, you know, get NFL contact, uh, content onto a billion iPhones is irresistible to them. So I agree with you. I think the NFL dearly wants to be in business with Apple. Uh, they took a look at that MLS deal and they saw that, you know, something along those lines with Sunday Ticket would work really well. Yeah. And the part of this that I find newly interesting actually in light of the Disney news one of the things that was not working out under Chappic was as big as Disney Plus is ESPN Plus is, is doing well it's on the rise Hulu's got pretty steady numbers but there is still this sense of disappointment around streaming I got I is the sense I got especially because it's not yet profitable Chappic just said at their last earnings report we expect our streaming properties to be profitable um, next year 2023 um, he's not going to get to see that through as CEO, but uh, every the NFL is obviously all in on streaming. Uh, they, you know, they brought in Amazon. They're lo they're looking at Apple. Their deals, even with you know CBS, NBC, all those Disney, um, all those include streaming elements to them. Um, but streaming Netflix is the only major streamer, as far as I know, that makes a profit. So. Mm. Is are the expectations living up to um, the reality here? Or do we just have to wait a few years for cord cutting to just continue on, uh, and then streaming is going to be the king, and linear is going to be you know the the other thing that you know a few people still yeah. have around? No, it isn't uh, living up to expectations. You know, it's been a slow growth. I mean, when I see broadcast networks complaining on Twitter, it's because you know everybody's talking about streaming this, streaming that. And they still have 10 times the audience that the streamers have. Uh, so broadcast networks are not going away. You know, The ones who really have to worry about streaming are the, the, the cable networks. I mean, the, the cable bundle uh, is fraying to the point of almost disappearing with, with the fact that, you know, something like 50 percent of uh, U.S. households don't have a cable package anymore. Uh, so they're always going to have a broadcast channel, you know, even if you have these little mouse ears to get, you know, CBS. But you don't have to get a cable package. However, you know what I mean, this move to streaming, which is supposed to be so transformative, is happening in little uh, bits and pieces. There isn't some huge surge uh, that's changing the industry the way, you know, the DVD player did or the VCR did. That that is not happening yet. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. And you know, like we've got moments like the World Cup. I think can be these moments where like things inch a little bit further along. You know, like maybe those people without a cable subscription say like, okay, now I'm going to get one more streaming service so I can watch the World Cup. I want to watch right. the NFL games. But yeah, there isn't this like seismic thing because there isn't like one thing that every single person in the world has to watch and if it's on a streaming service you get the streaming service obviously amazon's kind of thinking along those lines with their exclusive deal for um, thursday night football and it, you know that but it's it is very incremental and yeah happening kind of slowly um so um speaking of all that uh so we've got thanksgiving which i think our, our listeners will be listening to this after the game has already happened. Right. And then we've got Christmas coming up. So yes. what's the NFL got planned for uh, for this holiday season? Well, the NFL is no respecter of boundaries, Owen, not even its own. Uh, this uh, Thanksgiving, they're going to have uh, a triple header. Uh, and I expect uh, you know, the, the ratings to be monstrous. For example, last year, Thanksgiving games produced the number one most watched and the fourth most watched games of the regular season. But then the real action happens on Christmas. Christmas Day has long been dominated, as we all know, by the NBA. The NBA and 
ESPN and, and all their networks, they throw in five or six games that we watch LeBron and Steph all day long. Well, guess who's coming to Christmas Day to play Grinch this year? The good old NFL is going to run its first Christmas Day triple header, and that's going to set the stage for their first move into Black Friday next season when Amazon streams their first Black Friday game. So, uh, you know, the, the, the NFL, you know, is living up to Mark Cuban's estimate of it as a greedy pig in some ways. You know, they want it all, and they're going to take it. Yeah, and, and we've talked about this before, but it's worth hitting on again. Uh, Amazon streaming a game on Black Friday, a holiday that they are already, I mean, <laughs> you, you can sometimes forget, they're a retail company, and yes. uh, that is the biggest retail day in the world. They're already, you know, pulling that day away from the, the major retailers. And yeah, if they can get you to just sit at home, you're already on Amazon uh, on Black Friday. Um, and, you know, every ad is, you know, click here to buy this thing on Amazon. Uh, it's it's kind of the perfect marriage of everything they've got going yeah. on. It's insidiously brilliant. I, I wish I thought of it, Owen. You know, here's Amazon, you know, delivering a kill shot against the brick and mortar retailers. Don't go to Walmart. Avoid the chaos. Avoid the crowds. Sit home. Do all your shopping online on Amazon. And by the way, we got a nice new NFL game to show you. It's brilliant. And it, to me, is the best example that we have so far of tech companies doing something different with sports rights and you know you look at whatever cbs nbc abc it's all the same playbook you get people to watch sports you show them ads some amount of those people buy the things that yeah. they saw in the ads and you know life goes on um but streaming one you're not necessarily expecting ads obviously you know amazon shows ads on thursday night football that's pop, a big part of what yeah. they're they're getting out of that but um yeah when you have a property like amazon and apple it's like okay they want this to feel different the leagues want this to be a little bit different. Um, you know, maybe eventually it all kind of settles into, um, you know, what what we all kind of know and love of you get watch your sports, you get your commercials, etc. Yeah. That's still probably the main revenue driver here. But yeah, especially obviously with Amazon, there is that possibility. And, and Apple um, seems to be kind of at least hinting in certain directions that they've got other ideas for revenue streams. I mean, with... Um, multiple people have made this comment to me when you watch a baseball game on apple they will have um odds for you know six percent chance this guy hits into a double play like two percent right. chance of a home run uh the odds themselves maybe need to be um reconsidered there's been some um looking into that they're not always accurate anyway um a lot of people have said oh we're, we're thinking sports betting here like apple has not said that <laughs> to, to me but yeah. a lot of people who are looking at that are thinking if you're micro betting through throughout the game of you know is this, is Aaron Judge going to hit a home run night, right now and then up on the screen it says three percent mm -hmm. chance that Aaron Judge hits a home run right now then um, then yeah it's just kind of encouraging you in that direction so should well, be let's pretty. Let's take a look at what we know. Uh, you know during app, uh, Amazon's first exclusive stream of an NFL game on September fifteenth, their opening game. The company itself said they had more signups for Amazon Prime than during any other three-hour period in the company's history. And that includes Cyber Monday, Black Friday, and Prime Day. So, I mean, Amazon's got to be careful. They don't want to make its their telecast too schlocky. You know, like their interactive TV, they're you know, selling you jerseys and everything. But I could see some smart, carefully placed ads during the Black Friday stream where if you're an NFL shop customer or an NFL Plus customer, you get a special deal through Amazon while you're watching this game. You know, give you a chance to do a little of your Christmas shopping, you know what I mean, well, right there on uh, on Black Friday. So, yeah, they have to be careful not to come off as too schlocky, but I, I think that's where it's heading. I really do. Yeah, and one thing that they always tout, I've personally gotten pretty limited use out of this feature but it's something amazon talks about a lot is their x-ray feature where if you start yeah. you can do this while, with, while you're watching a movie or while you're watching a game you like mouse over you know the, the screen a character you know it'll give you some stats some information yeah um about whatever that thing is whatever's happening at that moment it's easy enough to see you know this guy's got 20 touchdowns this year and yeah. you know you can buy his jersey whatever it is so they're already kind of trying to bake in that um that, that extra content, that shoulder content into the, the broadcast itself. Well, um, here's something very interesting about that. I remember uh, back in the 90s, 
Uh, they were really touting something called interactive TV. Uh, whereas if you were watching Friends, you know, you could click a little link and, you know, buy Jennifer Aniston's outfit or Chandler's hat or all this type of stuff. And it was supposed to be the next big thing and it was going to revolutionize. We're all going to shop while we're watching TV. And you know what, Owen? It flopped. And the reason it flopped, because TV, they found out, is a washover. People don't want to interact when they're watching TV. They want to sit back and just watch and enjoy it and let it wash over them. So that's what I mean by Amazon's got to be careful about, you know, coming off like a two-bit retailer here with this uh, NFL product. The, the quality of the game is always number one. If you could chip a little in or chip a little here, you know what I mean, with some retail offers, do it. But the quality of the game has to remain. Yeah. And, you know, one big difference between then and now is everyone's got a phone in their hand now. So, right. you know, you might be tweeting, you might be whatever it is you're, you're doing while you're watching a game. Whereas in the 90s, yeah, maybe you've got AOL in this like giant yeah. desktop computer next to you, but you're, you're probably just doing one or the other. Um, right. Let's uh, let's look overseas. So the NFL uh, just had its, its game in Mexico. They've had games in Germany and London, yep. and they've been huge. This is something that I, I will admit being surprised by just how big the demand was, especially in, in England and, and Germany, uh, for what is, you know, the most American product of American products. Um, yeah. I mean, granted, it's just a few games. So if you want to, if you're a German NFL fan and you want to go uh, to an NFL game, this is your chance. Uh, you yep. only get it once or twice a year. Uh, but yeah, it's big enough that Goodell has floated this idea of a European division. Um, so yeah, let, let's talk about international expansion. It, was that surprising to you? And, and where do you think it's going? It wasn't surprising to me about London because I'd known about uh, fandom in London, but Munich blew me away. I yeah. mean, it was the most watched international game on NFL Network ever was from Munich. Uh, so I mean, the NFL has overnight seemingly developed a you know a huge fan base in the most populous country in Europe outside of uh, Russia. Uh, you know, with a thriving economy. And, you know, a young population that loves sports. So I, I think, you know what I mean, the NFL has always smarted and kind of seethed over, the, over its failure in Europe. You know, remember the World Football League and NFL Europe and all that? And it flopped and it failed. And the NFL does not like to fail at anything. So I think they'd love to go back into Europe in a big way. They're taking it step by step. But I will make a prediction in 10 years from now, there will be NFL franchises in London, Munich, and Mexico City. Yeah, wow. Mexico City, you know, easy enough to imagine because it's not that far. I mean, Mexico yeah. is, you know, closer to Texas than New York is. Um, but yeah, it'll be very interesting to see this league try to make it work, you know, with the Atlantic Ocean in the middle. That's why Goodell is talking. Let's just have a whole division here. You can play half your right. games just in Europe. That's still a lot of trips back and forth across the Atlantic. But, of yeah. course, the NFL has been doing this for a few years. Um, I mean, more than a few years. I think every As team the has Seattle played Seahawks. in London. Yeah, yeah I right. Mean, if, if you ever look at the miles flown by the Seattle Seahawks compared to some of the East Coast teams, I mean, these guys should get a, re a reward or something. I mean, they, they just fly an untold amount of miles to uh, to get to their games but you know when there's a will there's a way uh you know goodell has promised the owners he's going to get them to 25 billion dollars in total revenue how are you going to do it you're pretty maxed out in this country not a lot of markets left for an nfl team you got to do it internationally yeah and i got to talk to eli manning actually about this he played in the first uh the, the first game in london back when obviously right. when he was a giant and was there with the giants um, in a, you know, to like he's got his little show that he does with them. He was filming a couple episodes there. And um, he said when he, when he first got there, people were like cheering for punts. If there was like some kind of scrum or fight, they would cheer yeah. for that. Uh, and now they're cheering for like a two yard run on third and one because the, yeah. now they understand the action. Like they, everyone was having a good time throughout, but now they seem yeah. to actually understand the game. And it, it does speak to the NFL's long term commitment. Um, to, at least to London, and yeah, now it looks like Germany's not going anywhere. Goodell's talked about having games yeah. there every year, um, and yeah, maybe other markets too. I mean, it's it's working well enough in those two countries. You could see, yeah, maybe maybe Paris, maybe Madrid. Uh, so yeah, and yeah, Mexico yeah, City. Yeah, I, I, I read your story. Not. Yeah, yeah, I read your yeah. story. It was a lot of fun, you know what I mean, about how these Londoners, you know, were just treating the whole thing like a goof and a gag. But yeah. you know, the NFL has been very smart behind the scenes. 
to launch education programs. They've educated European fans about what the NFL is all about. These fans now know the league. They know what a first down is. You know what I mean? They know what a blitz is. They they know how the game works as well as, you know what I mean, the excitement and the hard hitting. And uh, I, I think that's been a huge investment by the NFL. Very smart money well spent. The other thing, too, that Owen, that they've done is they've created these player development academies over in Europe where, you know, the idea is to have European players come into the NFL. So when you establish that command. Uh, those kinds of academies, you become part of the community and it helps educate the average fan what the NFL game is all about. Yeah. And uh, just as a last topic here, I want to bring it back to these like legacy networks that are very dependent on the NFL, but you could see them kind of getting a little bit lost in the shuffle here. So yeah, CBS, NBC, Fox, ABC, where are they in all this? Are they just happily, you know, collecting their, their millions of viewers? Obviously, they're paying a ton, or they will be starting next year. And so, yeah, are they, like, barely hanging on? Are they doing great? How do they all fit into this equation? No, they're, they're, they're making money. Uh, look, you know what I mean? They're paying through the nose for the NFL, but, you know, some things are worth paying for, and the NFL is. They can go to Madison Avenue. They could sell those ads. They all get a Super Bowl every couple of years. If they're losing money, believe me, they get well on the Super Bowl really fast, particularly when you're charging 5 or $6 million for a 30-second commercial. So these, uh, these networks would never be in business with the NFL uh, if it wasn't uh, a moneymaker for them. And the other thing is the NFL gives them bragging rights. They can go to their affiliates. They can go to advertisers. They can go to their sales forces. And they say, you know what? No matter what they say about this shitty show that we have on, you know, Wednesday night or this crappy sitcom, we have the NFL. That's the right. the argument stopper. Yeah, and, and the NFL probably gets them some number of millions of viewers for their random sitcom that, you know, most people have never heard of. It's like, well, you right. know, too lazy to change the channel. Let's <laughs> see what this thing <laughs> is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, Mike, let's uh, just finish it up. Uh, give us uh, one prediction on kind of, what you? What's the next league's next big move? What should we be looking out for from the NFL, whether that's media or some kind of other expansion? I think the league's next big move is to you know make a decision on Sunday Ticket, and you know my bet is on Apple. Uh, mm-hmm. If they get Apple, and NFL is going to be in business with Apple on one side, uh, Amazon on the other, plus every legacy media network out there. So I mean that is a full house of cards right there uh and after that i I like your idea of international expansion creating a european division and i think that's ultimately where goodell wants to go and i think when you know you see the reaction particularly in germany you know this huge reaction uh, i i think you know you can make the uh, make the argument right now that it's a good business decision whereas nfl europe was ahead of its time and was a bad business decision yeah, and I'll go ahead and agree with you on Apple getting Sunday ticket. It just feels like that idea makes too much sense, has been out there for too long, and as far as I can tell, no one's shot it down yet. So yeah. uh, it just feels like, you know, if no one's no one's denying it and it, everyone yeah. seems to kind of be pointing in that direction, it's probably what's going to happen, and Apple clearly wants it. The NFL seems to want it. So, all right, Mike, thank you so much for joining us. A ton of great insight here. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be watching to see all these next moves. Um, and, yeah, it should be a pretty interesting Thanksgiving game, which, yeah, yeah will have already happened by the time you listen to us. <laughs> all right, thanks, Mike. Oh, and thank you. Hey, it's Abigail Gentra, host of The Lead Off, where front office sports breaks down the biggest stories of the day, where sports influences business and culture. We give the latest details on topics ranging from college and pro sports to fitness and supplements. Tune in to The Lead Off Daily for continued updates on teams, leagues, and companies making power moves in the industry. Find The Lead Off on Apple, Spotify, and Front Office Sports. Thank you so much for listening to The Newsroom. Please rate us or review us on the podcast service of your choice. Uh, it helps other people find the show, and we really do like to know what people are thinking about the show, what you'd like to see more of. Also, check out our other shows. We've got The Lead Off, where Abigail Genship gives you the biggest stories in the sports business world in five minutes or less. And also, My Other Passion, where our editor-in-chief, Ernest Baker, interviews some of the biggest figures in the sports world, sports executives, sports players, about the things you know about them and a lot of stuff you don't. So check those out. Leave us a rating for a review, and uh, we'll see you next week. Enjoy your holidays. Stay safe out there.